the mamas are a happy family who know how to catch fun. They enjoy each other's company and get whatever their heart desires, thanks to Mr. Momo's lucrative job. Mrs. Momo kept getting unclear but consistent premonitions of imminent disaster involving her husband in dreams. She tried her best to relate her fears to her husband. He, however, discarded the urgency of her fears as his business was all on his mind. A few weeks down the line, Mr. Momo was laid off his job as a wave of retrenchment swept over his department, a resultant effect of emergency restructuring process at his place of work. This is not acceptable. I cannot take this. Not long after, the Momo's economic status began to dwindle and they had to manage the little resources they have. No thanks to the husband's sudden loss of job. Darling, you must not recite your faith like this. We must put ever what has happened and move on. You've been enjoying my address of seeing our pastor for some days now. Why? Or is there any other solution in sight that you need telling me? Huh? Well, we always know me. I don't like sharing my personal experiences with all these dirty Jews. It's not part of me. But you still have to see the pastor no matter what. Please. You say so. At this critical juncture, Mr. Momo was willing to see his pastor, as advised by his wife. On learning about Mr. Momo's predicament, Pastor Nero referred him to a pastor colleague of his who is specially gifted in handling issues revolving around financial and work impediments. Pastor Eono, the referred pastor from Pastor Nero, is a boisterous deliverance minister in one of the new generation Pentecostal churches. He is popularly referred to as the radical minister of God by those who know him. His revelation proved to complicate Mr. Momo's situation the more. And the Lord was revealed to me. Without missing words, your wife was revealed as the force behind your job loss. That's not possible. She's a Do not be deceived. I have seen a lot of this in my career in this ministry. She is the force behind your job loss. I've told you to leave my house. You will not agree with me. You are the cause of my predicament. The aftermath of Pastor Yono's suggested solution to Mr. Momo's occupational setback was a divisive hole. He's telling me you're leaving my house. You are not leaving my house. We are not going anywhere. We are not leaving my house. We are not going anywhere. We are not. What is it? We are not going anywhere. Don't let me force you out. No, we are not going anywhere. No, no. We are not leaving. No, no. We are not leaving. No, no. It's been two years since Mrs. Momo and her daughter were sent packing. Though she kept sending emissaries to plead with her husband, it could not be reasoned with. At the moment, she is both financially and emotionally drained. She urgently needs a way out. The danger is that it's a little bit contradicting okay. God's word. Mm. God's word says that if the purpose to which God has brought them together is that together they build a home. And when one is falling, the other is able to raise him up. And so when you feel you are the only one to fall and rise, raise yourself up, there's a problem. You must understand that you need to have your partner engaged in whatever you are doing or something else. For example, if you are a doctor, you need to bring up your partner into the business so that both of you are in the business. Or you give her her specialities, what she's known to do. Give her and bring her up because in such doing, you are looking into your future. You can choose to ignore the same time. It's nobody's headache. When it's time for harvest, you, let's not say you go hungry. You will fast. <laughs> you, you just you try and spiritualize it and just fast. Now, 
it's it's good to invest we need to invest the bible even says there is he that withhold them more than his wheat hmm. withhold them more than his wheat that means that you should give but there are some portion you should withhold husbands can run businesses with their wives but it requires a lot of wisdom um i i once heard someone say uh, it happened to me also but i once heard someone say that uh, husbands can't teach their wives how to drive it's usually a problem <laughs> it's usually a problem husbands know how to drive mm. but to teach your wife to drive is a problem but another person can teach your wife and she will learn but when you teach your wife <laughs> your you may tend not to learn because it's like Because he was working and he, he felt all was fair, all was well, all was perfect. Mr. Poe is going to talk about all this. He was working, all was perfect. What's the power of husbands, fathers investing in their homes? Investing in their homes when it was when it's very, very booming and flowing and strong. What's the power of that? As long as the earth endures same, same time, time and harvest. And harvest time will not cease that's what the bible says you can choose to ignore the same time it's nobody's headache when it's time for harvest you, let's not say you go hungry you will fast <laughs> you, you will just try and spiritualize it and just fast now it's it's good to invest we need to invest the Bible even says there is he that withholdeth more than his meat. Hmm. Withholdeth more than his meat. That means that you should give, but there are some portion you should withhold. So if you withhold too much, it's a problem. If you if you withhold less, it's also a problem. Okay. So there's one you need to withhold for you to invest. Because if you have nothing in your hands, you can't invest anything. If you have nothing in your hands, God does not have anything to bless. So you need to invest. So if you have the days of uh, windfall, like it was in the country at the time that uh, crude oil was sold for a very high amount and it was a lot of money and all that and you didn't save. Then you come to a situation like uh, this period now that you know you have to start dropping the benchmark for the budget and all that. So if you have a time in your life, for those of you out there, you have a time in your life, you are doing well, you are able to, to afford your basics and you are able to afford some extra, learn to save some extra for investment. But this is where another challenge is. Uh, not all investments are safe for everybody. Other people may be doing it and it's working for them, but it may not work for you. That's why you need to pray. That's why you need to seek counsel. That's why you need to have good understanding about the business that you intend to do. But eating all your tomorrow today, there's no wisdom behind it. There's no wisdom behind it. So the, the man ought to have done something for his wife like I said before, house is no marrying wife. So if you know that um, the job you are doing, you are not the owner of the company. Everybody will let the job go someday. Even the owner of the company will leave the company someday. Okay. So what are you going to do by then? If you don't have any other any other source of livelihood or something to take care of yourself when you have you have left the company, it's not even pension though. It's not even pension. Some people think that I sit on my pension and will enjoy. These days we've heard of fraud in the uh, pension uh, service now. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's not even a guarantee that you have worked and ah, when you retire, your pension will take care of you. It's a no. The best thing you can do is, by the grace of God, through God's inspiration, manage your money by yourself. Not government managing your money for you or any other person managing your money for you. Even if you have to put in an investment in the bank or something, your eyes, your two eyes have to be on it. You have to see how it is going and how it is coming. That's what you can be sure of. So... Establish the business with your wife that is in your in your house. You live together, you do things together, you communicate together. It's like it's the best you can do. Rather than putting it in trust of somebody else yeah. outside who may take advantage of you. With your wife, I'm according sorry. to knowledge, you must know who your wife is. You must know her ability. Yeah. Some of them are even better than the husband. Intelligentially, they are very good. Uh, manager, uh, managers, manager. they're also very good back man. Like I said, we help you save your money. They, they said in Japan, they are the highest saving, they have the highest saving culture because they involve their wife in the act of their salary. You understand? So Japan has the highest saving culture. The wife is going to, 
Women are very intelligent. Some of the things that my wife told me when we were young, if I have done them, but by now I would have been very much. The very intelligent people. God invested. That's why they are mates. They are midwives to help us midwife what God has given to us to deliver. You know, the vision God has given to us. So sometimes people are afraid of the women. Don't trust. My father told me, don't trust women. No, don't. I said, stop it there. You know, trust woman. I will trust my wife. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't love. Don't tell women that they are too good. Otherwise, you. I said no. In that time. Because he has made all things beautiful in this time. We write, yeah, so we write the story. Thank we write you. The so I won't, I won't, I will forsake you, forsake your failures and your successes, and build on my own. Because now I am in Christ. Then you were not in Christ. And, and another thing was that as at that time, um, um, uh, female education, all these girls' education, there, whatever, was, low, was not given priority. Yes. So the women were not built. That mm -hmm. human capacity was not there. But now, you go to a lot of schools. If you look at population. Mm -hmm. The boys are even dropping out of school. Yeah, like, quicker yeah. than him. There's a Bill Clinton's wife is is intelligent than Bill Clinton. You saw it there, is it? That the wife of Bill Clinton, the American president, the wife is so intelligent. So you don't think they are they are not second class, they are first class. But sometimes again, that brings us to the next thing we should talk about so the area of this because of the intelligence of the woman. Don't you think it's a part of why men are scared to invest into their wives? Okay, it's good. she's going to go higher, the spot is going to drop, and when she goes there, I'll come here. The question is, yes. whose name is she bearing? Okay. <laughs> she's bearing my name, Mrs. Sakbeji. Okay. That's where where she's going. She's bearing my name. Wow. Yeah, right? What are you saying like that? Ah, I'm proud like that, that that's Mrs. Sakbeji. <laughs> Anyway, you are talking Understand. about you are talking about the foolish men, right? The yeah. foolish men yeah, are men. afraid of to invest in their wives. Who bear their names? Okay, I say this all the time. I am a king. Yeah, I have a queen. Yeah, I have subjects. It's my kingdom. I can look at Bible days now. Kings can give even up to half of their kingdom to somebody that yes. is happy. And I've, I've told somebody that, imagine the king, you make the king so happy, the king say, ask whatsoever you want unto half of my kingdom. You say, okay, king, give me half of the kingdom. And then the king gives you half. You are as powerful as the king, the king only has a crown on his head. And then you make the king happy another time, and the king says, ask me whatever you want unto half of my kingdom. You say, king, give me half. And then the king gives you half. Now you have three quarters, the king has only a quarter. You can continue to do that until the king has only the seat that he's sitting on. But the truth is that the king is always the king. Okay. There is never a time the king will give you his crown. There is never a time the king will give you his crown. Now, if the queen were to be the one making the king so happy, and the queen ends up controlling everything in the kingdom, the queen still does not have the crown of the king. The king remains the king. The king yes. That comes to... <laughs> what name is she bearing? <laughs> yes. The is that your woman. wife? Invest in your wife. In fact, I tell men out there, if you are afraid to invest in your wife, you will work yourself to death. Yes. You will work and work and work and work. Eventually, you will complain and complain and complain, okay. and you will work yourself to death. Give that woman enough value. Build her up. And you, you will relax. You can go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Have fun. To manage your work. You will do it well. But I according to knowledge. Yes. Because some are not so. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Know, know your wives. And, when they give them money, they train it somewhere. Okay. Somebody said, the mother told that. Uh, whenever your husband gives you money, divide into three. Send some to me, the mother. Uh -huh. Now, if you discover your wife is that kind of person, deal with her according to what? Knowledge. Knowledge, thank you. <laughs> okay, you're right. You best do your home, but do it according to knowledge. knowledge. Yes, that's very, very wonderful. Okay, we're going to be wrapping up this. You won't say so you don't know your wife. You know your wife. Yes. I know her well. I know her well. You know her strength. And she knows me very well. well. Too. Nobody else can describe me that much. So you had so know yourself and manage it very well so you can make the most out of it. Wow, it's been very, very, very hot right here. I, I guess my guests are not so hot. You may no. ask. Cool. Okay, please, we'll go on a short break. I'll be back to conclude this session. Please don't go anywhere. we we'll right back. Hello, viewers at home. You're welcome back. Before we went on the break, we were talking about counsel. And we said, although scripture says that in the multitude of counsel, there's safety. Some have been counseled because of long counsel. Okay, we want to still talk about that. 
So, um, Sir Kedja, I wanted to talk about um, members idolizing their pastors. Bible says, Jesus said, uh, but no, Paul, when Jesus said it, say, follow me as I follow Christ. Okay, what about the place of how, 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 how should Christians balance this? I do like what pastor just said this and like you clip with just saying, my pastor said I should do something about it. So pastors even go as far as speculating, even when it's out of scriptures, how do we cope that in the body of Christ? Yeah, you need just to be balanced in the word of God. That's the only way. Otherwise, Paul even said it, that many would come after me and they will, they will they come as wolf. But I'm saying to you, they will give you another gospel, mm. which is not the true gospel. But listen, stand still. So the truth is that we must not take everything that is spoken on the earth. You must pass them, screen them through the word of God. And if you don't know the word of God, I will do. There are many Christians who don't even have Bibles. Oh. They don't have Bibles. They don't, they don't have it. They don't, they don't read the Word of God until Sunday. They don't come for Sunday school class. They don't come for Wednesday classes where they will learn. Why Jesus said, learn of me. So we need to learn of whom we are following. So that any, you see my sheep, hear my voice. You will know this is the Lord speaking through this man. Stranger they will not follow. A stranger they will not follow. Because in the midst of the flocks, we have, we have hirelings. Yeah. So many now who are not true shepherds. And then God said it in Jeremiah 23. But I will give you shepherds that will speak my word. But there are other ones who will come and say things that I have not said. If somebody has gone through that, then you will be very careful. And the only point is that for every one of these things is deception. Be very careful that you be not deceived. And the only way for you is to be knowledge-based. full. Let the word of God dwell in you richly richly so that in time of need you fetch out of it to quench every fire dust of falsehood that is the only way you survive the times we are now period okay mm -hmm. mr face you're nodding your head there's something you want to ask the thing is that in the world of today with the way we do our parents the right. way a lot of pastors go about ministry pastors will want to be idolized. Mm. They generally want to be idolized. When they say a thing, they want you not to second guess. When you choose to be Berean in attitude by checking, your, if your pastor becomes aware, not all pastors, but a lot of pastors, yes. they say you don't trust them, so they are not, they, in fact, they make you feel as if you are evil. They want you to take their word as the word of Christ. But the truth is that if you work closely with pastors, you'll find out that they are as human as you as are. Well. God just selected them, gave them a grace, so they have extra power, or extra ability to do some things spiritually than you, and you can't compete with them. The fact that they are human like you does not mean they are exactly like you. They are actually superhuman in a way, but they are still human. It's just that there's a little super added to it. But meet a lot of pastors you find out that the same issues you have we have. Some pastors are challenged with their wives at home. Some pastors still need wisdom to run their ministry. Some pastors are having financial problems. Some pastors don't even know how to run businesses. Pastors themselves still have to learn. So if those pastors now tell you that they are they are everything, they have it all, you are already having a problem. That's why pastors do have it. And that's why even their mentors are mentors. That is why in every flight, you have, you have a captain, you have a first officer. The captain flies the plane. The first officer can be as knowledgeable as the captain, but doesn't touch the controls until the captain says, touch. Even that captain, after some years, his pilot license will expire. He has to go back to school, go and do the certification again. He may have been flying for 30 years, but he has to go back and do his education. Another person will sit him down to teach him how to guide him. That's how it is. Okay. But pastors generally these days want to be idolized. The point is that the pastor is not Jesus. Don't idolize your pastor. When your pastor is giving you the word, 
your pastor has given you regardless, have respect for your pastor. So go back and check if it works for you. The experience of your pastor may not be the same with you. The pastor uh, may also be a prophet who is able to see things and all that. But even sometimes, prophets get it wrong. Sometimes, prophets, they get you wrong. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, it's not even as if they got you wrong. That's what God has told them. But you may find a situation where, because of your own faith, you can have a lot of changes in situations. So please, just don't idolize your pastor. Okay, um, I, I, I like the last part you told that they might get it right. And let's assume that in this case, it was, or it's really the wife that's the problem. It's an assumption. Assumption, I said that. I said yeah. assumption. Okay. It's an assumption. The wife is the problem. So you've, you've, um, Pastor Peje, uh, when Peje was there, you've, you've been in this light. Sometimes when God gives you such red hot instructions, how best should pastors deliver it to mm. the, the members? Okay, right. Some of them you don't even tell the person because you must look at the let me use the word the the state of the person. Where okay. is the child? The problem, Where is the child? And when you deliver something to somebody who is a child, he will dagger himself. You give mm. a dagger to some a sword of the spirit to somebody who is a child will stab himself. So you look at him whether he's mature. If not mature, don't deliver it at all. You can use the system that Nata used for King David. You can even know that it's the wife and yet call him to a prayer and pray for him. And when he's free, then later on, when yeah. he's mature, you tell him. Wow. Jesus even said there are many things I will say to you. Can't bear but you can't bear them. Mm. You can't carry it now. But when the Holy Ghost is gone, mm. so he, you must be able to wow. know who you are talking to. That's, that's big you are talking to a babe, you just destroy that home. Mm, and that's how many have destroyed her. If you know it's a mature person, you call him. Say, but what I'm telling you now is this. We'll pray about it. And the Lord will deliver you. And that's mature person. Say, I write to you, Father, because you're my God. So when you're talking to a father, and you're talking to a young one, I write to you, young one, because the sins are forgiven. I write to you, you, because you're the strength. So what I want to say is that there are categories of people in the church. We must know them. And if you're a true pastor, don't just say, there's anything that God will reveal to me about the church. Maybe somebody wants to die. I don't come to the church and say, eh, somebody's about to die here. And you, Teresa, you're the one. No. To build fear. To build fear. Yes. You say, let's pray against death. And it's a general issue. Everybody will pray about it. Whenever you come and say, I saw you, you die. It's not, it's not that. Like and a lot of prophets mm. do that now. Mm. I, I think they are just trying to be identified as mm. a prophet, you know. Yeah, they like to speak this mm. thing and uh, there's no... There's no wisdom in it. Mm-hmm. I know sometimes in quotes it looks as if God sets one up, you know, because uh, I remember a day I slept and uh, I woke up. I woke up with an instruction, and God told me to call one particular person and give the person one of the in quote nastiest message you can give to anybody. And I should. Go. I woke up from sleep, and the instruction: pick up your phone. Call that particular person and tell the person that her tears does not move God. What kind of message is that? <laughs> but but that was what I was told. Okay. To deliver the message was a problem. If, if I don't deliver the message, it's also a problem. Yes. So I I because I knew that's what God told me to tell the person. How can you be you are weeping privately? I didn't know what you are weeping about. But God said I should tell you that all your cries was not moving. But faith. But I had to do it. I picked up my phone. I called her. I said, I'm sorry, I just woke up. But this is what God said I should tell you. That your tears was not moving. I don't know what it means. I delivered the message, but I don't know what the message meant. It meant I was I was afraid. <laughs> I was ashamed. I was wondering what would come back. But you know, towards the evening, the person called me back and told me thank you. Up till today, I don't even know why the person right. is thanking me. So it's a heavy message. But well, that's a matured person who go ahead. That's a matured person. I just give it to mm-hmm. the person the way I was told, and that is the end. So, but the truth is, yes. If the purpose of your delivering a message is self-aggrandizement, yes, you are wrong. wrong yes. But if the purpose of the message is you really want solution, you know when it's like there's fire in the kitchen. Yeah? Sometimes you have fire, you now carry water, you now put it. There is a time that even the water will escalate the fire. Yes. Okay. Um, what are the things about message? Okay. The prophetic word edifies. It does not scatter. Mm, I heard that. It builds. I heard that. It builds. So anything that scatters is not from God. So you mean that God is scattering that one? No. Even Mary Magdalene was giving a message. Yeah, Harold, giving a message. 
redeemed. He redeemed her. Okay. You understand? So, our, 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 our first is so well, any message, prophecy, today. word of God is for edification, okay. correction, reproof. The end point of it is that that someone is going to be saved. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 for edification. God let, let's, if, I, if I leave our first, it will continue. <laughs> I will laugh, I laugh, I laugh. Okay, we have to go, we have to close. As I was supposed to find out with our viewers, particularly, we don't have time, but we still have to talk about this. What do you tell Mrs. Momo to do? What should she do right now? The help she needs is not money. Okay. Give her proper cancer and increase into her wisdom of okay. life. Okay. Yes. Okay. And uh, if you give her money, that money will not end anywhere. It will not go anywhere. She will spend it. But give her what wisdom can give her riches, jewels. Okay. Her. Mr. Praise, as a final word for us. There's a common saying that says that the prob problem half known is half solved. So, in my opinion, in my opinion, I'm sure something is wrong with the counsel that the man yeah. received. And uh, I believe that the woman also knows that something is wrong with the council. Now, unless she is the problem, if she knows she's not a problem, then she has the upper hand. All she needs to do is pray. Pray. Scatter anything that needs to be scattered. Arrange anything that needs to be arranged. So I speak to you in that particular situation and any other person in a similar situation. Once you have identified that you are in the right position, you have the offer. Yeah. Use your faith, use the whole of your belief, use the whole of your authority to declare what you want. Once you have declared it, leave it for God. God is going to do it. God does not stop prayers. He doesn't stop them to answer later. Okay. When you ask now, He answers now. You may see the answer later, but He answers right now. now. Okay, you heard it. Let's 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 close. You have to go. Okay, it's been wonderful right here. I've learned so much, and our. Um, guests have been so wonderful. So we thank you so thank much. You much. Thank, you. thank you, Mr. Thank you Praise. Much. Thank you very, very much. And we as a home too, thank you also because we're here. But we have to go now. And like we always say, you can follow us on our social media under the display on the screen. Drop your comments, drop your questions, and drop your suggestions. Everything that has begun has an end. Gotta go. Bye. Sky